G'day all, it's Colin from PCTLC and thanks for joining me. In this video we'll be looking at Alpine Linux. This one here is a lightweight distro. It was, um, I'll be putting the specs up prior to the video and it'll probably show you how big the um, ISO was and all that information. Alpine Linux looked like a uh, promising distro, however the, the problem with this one is it was a command line install which probably didn't suit what the viewer was after regarding a complete distro for 900 megabytes. So let's have a look at what this distro was all about. So this is Alpine Linux website. Um, we've got uh, Alpine News, latest development, downloads. And I downloaded the standard by 8664. Uh, Alpine is at, as it was intended, just enough to get you started. Network connection is required. So that's the one I downloaded. About small, simple, secure. Alpine Linux is an independent, non commercial, general purpose Linux distribution designed for power users who appreciate security, simplicity, and resource efficiency. Resource efficiency. Alpine Linux is built around. MUSL, LibC and BusyBox. All right, so I haven't really heard too much of those things being thrown around. I know it's part of the um, the libraries and all that stuff or whatever you call it. Um, but yeah, I don't really don't really see distros throwing those words around when it comes to being small and so forth. So that's interesting. Alpine Linux is a very simple distribution that will try to stay out of your way. It uses its own package manager called APK. The OpenRC init system, script driven setups, and that's it. This provides you with a simple crystal clear Linux environment without all the noise. Okay, so let's see how we go with that one. Alpine Linux. So next we're going to be having a look at Alpine Linux. 131 megabytes in size. So let's check that one out. Let's get that started. Localhost login for Alpine Linux. So we need to log in as the user root and then type setup dash Alpine. Answer the questions. Uh, we'll try US. I have no idea which <laughs> what's what the alternate uh I have no idea what the alternate is. Let's just try US uh can we enter and skip past that? Select variant. Do we need to know what our variant is for our keyboard to install a distro? So this these are the um the problems you can have with these um Minimal distros that you download. I'm just going to try US dash Norman. Sounds like normal, so I'll try that. System host name. Um, what is it? Alpine. Let's just try that. Oh, so my keyboard's not. <laughs> my variant has is not working correctly because um, it's told me that what I typed was incorrect. So looks like here I'm going to stop. Here for Alpine Linux. Um, if it's going to be difficult, a difficult process, and I'm unsure of the uh, level of uh, skill skill set level for the viewer that's looking for an operating system 900 megabytes or less, then I don't think it's worthwhile continuing with that. Okay, so after installing quite a fair few Linux distros, I'm going to come back to Alpine Linux because I failed the first install. So we're going to give that another go. So what I'm doing here is I'm working with the Alpine Linux wiki here. And first thing we do is we log in as root. And then we try setup, setup-alpine. Okay, so we go US keyboard and the variant is US. That's where I got stuck last time. Host name, I just keep to Alpine VBox. I'm going to use 
ETH0. Now this could be a bit complicated if you're using a wireless. So I'm, I'm in VBOX, so it, it's not overly complicated, but if you've got wireless, it could be a lot more complicated. So the IP address, uh, we use DHCP. Any manual configuration, no. Password. Retype password. It says it's a weak password. Uh, time zone. Uh, if you want to know anything, just put a question mark and we'll give you some info. I'm just going to type Australia with a capital R with a capital A. Australia. And then question mark again. And it's Perth with a capital P. Uh, this one here is none. We'll go with the default. Just press enter. Um, we'll go with crony. And the mirror, it doesn't give you the option to scroll up or anything like that, which is a bit disappointing. I don't know if it's because I'm in VirtualBox, but uh, it says on the um, on the wiki that uh, one should be good enough, should be more than acceptable. So we'll type one. We'll just press enter there and take the default open SSH. Um, so which disk do we want to use? I'm going to go with SDA. So this is going to wipe all your data on the disk. So make sure you've got a spare disk or practice in, in VirtualBox like I'm doing. Um, we'll type sys. Go with sys. Erase uh, the above disk, yes. Proceed anyway, yes. Yes. I already had some partitions there, that's why that came up. Otherwise, if there's no partitions, because I've already installed it, so I wanted to do it again on camera, because uh, I didn't capture it on camera, I thought I'd do it off camera first. Installation is complete, please reboot. Under normal circumstances, the text that's in red would not have showed up. It would have just gone straight through and installed. I failed the first time, so I did it off camera managed to sort it out and so I thought I would run through this again. So that's reboot. I'm just going to type reboot. Okay, so we have to log into Alpine Linux. So um, I don't remember putting a username, so it would have to be root, I think, and the password. You can set up the system with the command set up Alpine. So we have to do the same thing again, is it? Set up dash alpine. No, we don't want to go through that again, do we? All right, so um, it looks like this is a little bit like an Arch Linux situation, whereas we have to install our xorg base and all those sort of things. Um, so it's come to the point where very much Alpine Linux is not going to be a worthwhile download for a lightweight distro because like we're, like I've said, I want everything, the bare minimum applications from the get-go. So uh, this one's probably not suitable for that. Let's power off Alpine Linux and we'll move on to our next distro. Unfortunately, the installation of Alpine Linux uh, wasn't suited for what we were looking for, which was a complete desktop pretty much out of the box that someone can be can get up and running. So if you want to uh, discover Alpine Linux yourself and try the install, maybe this uh, video may have piqued your interest. Um, but it's definitely not what I was looking for. Um, for starters, it's a little bit on the difficult side of installation. Also, we have no control over the size of the install as well, which is another problem that we face. And um, unfortunately, this it's not suited for those reasons because we, we want pretty much everything that the user needs, minimum, if not a little bit more if, it's, if it can be achieved. 
uh, without having to download a whole heap of um, desktop environments and Xorg and all those sorts of things because because at the end of the day, um, we just want to have a complete install uh, with with the um, with everything that comes within the ISO. So this is just um, the tutorials that was uh, that came from Wiki and from the Wiki tutorials and how tos for Alpine Linux um, installation use cases and there's uh, quite a few things there can uh, get you through. It's got the um, post install desktops and applications um, XFCE LXDE. Open box. Uh, there are some community developed ones, I think, which is Mate and something else. Yeah, Mate here. Uh, but that's a community um, desktop, apparently. But the the normal ones you've that you've got is these two here mainly, I believe. And this is the installation page that I threw up before within the video. And um, I'll leave some of these links down in the show notes. I don't see this distro being appropriate for what we're looking for in this uh, lightweight distro series. But I gave it a go. Um, I thought it might have been um, worthwhile. Um, it does get a little bit complicated with the install and I'm not going to spend too much time on installation because there's a few distros to get through. The only advantage here is the fact that it's only 160 megabyte download so there is quite a lot of room to be downloading some things but how much to complete the desktop is an unknown factor so that's something whereas I'm talking about we have no control over. So pretty much we want to download an ISO, install it, and you've got maybe an office program, web browsers, and image viewer, and a movie player, whatever, out of the box. Pretty much complete with the basics of everyday usage within the ISO itself. So that was Alpine Linux. Maybe you might want to give it a go might be something that you're looking for. Uh, for me, not something I'm looking for within this series at least. So I hope you enjoyed the video. hope you found it interesting and informative and thanks for watching.